<laughs> it's my privilege to welcome you delegates to the 132nd annual convention of the Willow Tappers and Shunters Club. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, that was the last week's speech. <laughs> right. Now, you fellow uh, Monte Carloites, I trust you've all found suitable mooring places for your yachts, anchorage for your schooners and motor cruisers and what have you. And you're all ready for the rest of the day. Um, I think, first of all, I'm, I'm not quite sure in what capacity I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> I mean, am I the father of the bride? Am I the father of the groom? Having <laughs> well, said that, I hope you won't mind if, if, if I say that it's my privilege, actually, to be a father to both. Hey. So, um, the first thing, obviously, to, to talk about is the most wonderful ceremony that we've all just been privileged to be yeah. 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 Words absolutely fail. I mean, I had some thoughts That's about unusual. things that one, one might say. But the, the whole thing was just so spectacular. And the introductory choreography, <laughs> it's, it's, it's going down in history. It will be replayed time and time again. And thanks to all the participants in that choreographed intro, it really set the, mo the mood and the tone yeah. for the rest of the ceremony. And then also uh, the wonderful speeches that were given uh, by some of the principal guests, and also in particular by James and Rios, were, were absolutely mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. And I think the whole ceremony was wonderfully conducted, and our thanks go to the celebrant, to, to Miriam, who I think has had to rush off onto the next one, <laughs> which is rather sad, yeah. uh, and, and say, well, congratulations, James and Rios, you did it in style. Mm -hmm and we hope that you have truly a long and happy life together. Yeah. 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 So I think at this stage I ought to also just say that on behalf of the uh, hacking uh, Spring Hall Jackson, uh, Gray Newton, Tizier clan, <laughs> we would like to welcome the Hussein clan, Hussein clan into our little uh, phone. <laughs> uh, if for no other reason that um, we've had the pleasure over many years of having uh, entertaining uh, with uh, Riaz and James. And at Christmas times we often play Boulder Dash. Now I don't know if any of you play this game of Boulder Dash. But if you have Riaz playing it, I guarantee you will split your side life. <laughs> a good moment. Now if any of the rest of the family, whether it's uh, Rafi, Rashida, Ravini or Rishma, we look forward to having many a hilarious evening playing, not just ball to but having a good social time together. Now, looking at the gathering around me just brings to mind one or two thoughts about how things have changed over the last maybe 30 or 40 years. <clears throat> and I was thinking in particular of things like the advances in technology, particularly in communications. And I know that um, many of my family would look upon me as being a, a dinosaur when it comes to... <laughs> Family heads nodding vigorously. <laughs> but but I, I am a little bit behind the times. I, I never cease to be amazed at the, the way these young kids can sit with a laptop on their knee, a hot laptop on their knee, television set on, set of headphones blaring away, texting half a dozen text messages on their mobile phones all at the same time. I and mean, that really is multitasking. Whereas me, the, the dinosaur, it took 20 minutes before I realised that you couldn't actually open James and Riaz's invitation. So, so uh, and the other thing, thinking about uh, what I was just saying, I'm just a little word to LJ there. Maybe. You know, try swapping a hot uh, laptop for a hot lap dancer. That's <laughs> much more fun. <laughs> anyway, the, the next major advance that, that we've all come so used to is the advent of fantastic modern travel. Rail, air, road. And how the world has shrunk immeasurably. And it's interesting, I can remember maybe 20 years ago, sitting in a pub when we were living in Warboys, sitting in a pub talking to an old boy in the corner who lived in the village all his life. And he actually remembered somebody who had lived in the village who had never left the village. Now that is just extraordinary. Uh, it was later that I realised that at the time that he was living there, there were 14 pubs on the high street. <laughs> so he to the village anyway. But, but times have changed. Even my great aunt Alice, who lived to the ripe old age of 82, she has never been out of this country. 
I remember as a student in the early 60s starting on trips just to the continent, and it was very much of a, an avant-garde type of thing to do at the time. Nowadays, it's taken for granted. And of course, what we have now is travel to and from all over the world. And just to mention a few of the uh, places from which many of our guests have come, we've got people from Australia, from, from Melbourne, so uh, good day. <laughs> 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 because Riaz spent uh, a year over in Australia, which is, which is nice. He was a happy year in, in Brisbane, and I'm told that he thoroughly enjoyed it. Then we've got people from uh, Sri Lanka, I believe, and Malaysia. So I'd just like to say, Yaduk. Now, you all think I know what the local word is, but actually that's just good day backwards, because I haven't got face day. <laughs> <laughs> then we've got a contingency uh, from the United States. We've got people from LA, people from New York, and people from San Francisco. So, howdy folks. Howdy. <laughs> we've even got one charming young lady who's tottered all the way on crutches from Mallorca in Spain just to be here today. And fantastic. She said it was no trouble at all, but she had problems negotiating the Boulevard Peripherique. <laughs> so welcome to welcome to her. So um, I've lost my place. What we're talking about? Because we're coming from different places. That's right. That's yeah. right. Not because last but not least, of course, we've got the Caribbean connection. Trinidad and Tobagoites who are scattered amongst us, and so uh, so uh, there must be a word, of, a, a local word for that. So uh, your mom. <laughs> Near at home, of course, from, in no. the UK, we've got people from the length and breadth of the country, people all the way from Scotland, people from Devon, people from uh, Wales, uh, Bristol, Gloucester, Yorkshire. Yes, we've got people from Derbyshire, uh, Cambridgeshire. Uh, <laughs> Suffolk, and, and, of course, and of course London. So it's great to see everybody gathered here from all those parts of the world just for this wonderful day of, of celebration. Now those, amongst those guests, perhaps the, the oldest acquaintances of James are those that he met whilst he was at the first school in Cambridge when he was a, a nice <laughs> young man. And I believe some of the friends have friends that he met whilst he was on uh, ski uh, holiday. Mm -hmm. Subsequently to the purse, he went then on to Bristol, to spend three years at Bristol University. What was interesting there was that Riaz, whilst James was at Bristol, Riaz was also at Bristol. Mm -hmm. Albeit they didn't know each other, yes. and they didn't meet each other ever there. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> James sent me an email giving me a little bit of background about uh, various people and he made this delightful slip of the keyboard because he said that whilst he, James, lived at South Lee Road, Riaz loved on White Lady. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to having a word with Riaz later. <laughs> Then, of course, subsequent to, to, to being in Bristol, James got his degree in, in, in geography. And, of course, what you do when you get a degree in geography, you go and work for a firm of lawyers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, they thought he knew his way around. I think that was, the, that was why they took him on. So he then worked for S.J. Berwin, and he then worked for Old Wang. So welcome to all you Berwinians and old wangers <laughs> who are around here. They're just wangers. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, I think I've taken up too much of your time, but I thought I couldn't finish without offering a few words of perhaps pastoral advice to the, to the happy couple. And uh, just a very few words. I feel it's important that, if, as you go on uh, your, your new direction together, that um, I should suggest that some of the most important things to do are that one should be totally honest and totally upfront with the two of you. Between the two of you, no secrets. No skeletons in the cupboard. Now I say this because I happen to know uh, a couple, uh, <laughs> another couple, uh, a man and a woman, a young man and a young woman, who got engaged and were sitting one evening enjoying uh, a glass of wine. And the husband to me said to his fiancée, Darling, I think it's most important that we are totally honest and upfront with each other. We 
and no skeletons in the cupboard. Are there any things that you'd perhaps like to tell me about your life before you met? She thought for a minute and she said, well, yes, actually, darling. She said, uh, I used to be a hooker. <laughs> well, of course, naturally, it was somewhat nonplussed at this. He said, but it's all behind me now. It's all finished. Well, he thought for a minute and thought, well, oh, that's a bit unusual. He said, but maybe I, I can look at her. Yeah, and maybe she'll be good for a trick or two, who knows? <laughs> so he said, to her, well, um, I, think I, I think I can live with that, he said. Is there, is there anything else you want to tell me? She said, well, there's two things, she said. Her name used to be Nigel, and I used to play for Wigan. <laughs>